Sweet. Hey there, this is just a quick video to show you all of my PTC heating element projects that I've made over the years, all in one video. Here's what's coming up. Ovens, frying pans, crock pots, griddles, humidifiers, water heaters, air heaters, saucepans, burners, and water distillers. All 12 volt and all easy DIY. If you stick with 12 volt, you can run them on the 12 volt solar panels, 12 volt batteries, or a 12 volt power supply. There's also something called finned PTC. That's this stuff. These are a few of the projects I've done over the years with that. But for this video, I'm mainly going to stick with the tablet PTC. These are heat-powered stove fans, by the way. They'll show up throughout the video. Alright, let's jump into it. It's just pouring off this thing. Oh, this thing's putting off heat big time. Awesome. Or a double sized one. Puts off a ton of heat. Awesome little heating element. This has got to be one of my favorites. Super easy to make. You just tape the elements on the underside of the cast iron and you're good to go. Sweet. By the way, if you're going to do this, definitely use a fajita steak plate. Don't just try to put them on the underside of a cast iron pan. That won't work. The cast iron's too thick on those. You really need thin cast iron. And the thinnest stuff I could find was these fajita steak plates. This is a 100% metal bread box, by the way. Some of them have a little bit of plastic on them, and you definitely don't want to use one with any plastic. That metal lid, by the way, is just from a coffee can. It's the top part of one of those large coffee cans. If you want to get the oven even hotter, you could use a thicker internal lid. These metal can cookers are awesome, by the way. This is a steel model. Then the next model I did that I'll show you in a minute is a stainless steel model. And now I followed that up by making a stoneware model with a removable crock. They cook like crazy, they're super easy to clean, and they're just awesome, they're great. Here's just a few things you can cook.
This can hold up to eight large eggs, by the way. It can also be used as an oven. By the way, the heating cylinder itself is just made using aluminum flashing. This unit has two heat settings, by the way. And there it is. Check this out. 12 volt water distilling. Note that I used a stainless steel coupler as well. They sell them in both stainless steel and regular steel, but I went with the stainless just so we could be kind of a purist on the water distilling. If you want the purest water possible, use a stainless steel coupler like I did, along with the stainless steel water hose and then catch the water either in a stainless steel container or in glass. Anything from zero to two parts per million is technically considered professionally distilled. Drop it in. One. One part per million. That's awesome. You only need four for this one, because we're only looking for steam, but not a rolling boil. Pretty cool. This one looks kind of wacky, but it actually works really well. You can use the pots like this on top of them. You can use metal pots on top of them. I tried ceramic, a whole bunch of things. And you can even stick the heat part stove fans on top of the pots if you want. This is the oven I showed you earlier, but I added sand in it to make it like a sand bed air heater. And those fans just blow the heat around like crazy. Check out the elements. See how the tape and the elements, everything stays in perfect shape. And of course you can cook over that. You can leave the sand in there and just cook over it like that if you want to. The heat is just literally pouring off of this thing. It's insane. It's working awesome. 271, 272. 
That's top temps right there. Now I'm going to show you a series of information pages. I'll just leave them on the screen for a couple of seconds each, so pause the player if you want to read any of it in detail. Here's a quick shot to show you what they call the startup surge or the startup spike. That's all six of them. They top out at about 2.54, that's at about the one minute mark, and then over the next three minutes or so, three and a half minutes, it drops back down again. Okay, and here it is graphed out. You can see at the minute mark it spikes, and by the four to five minute mark, it's pretty steady, just over 100 watts for the six of them. Note that the elements are self-regulating though, so they'll pull more or less power depending on what they need to maintain the heat rating. That's why they list them like this, 5 to 50 watts. 50 watts just refers to the startup surge. My projects as a whole are running anywhere from 20 to 25 watts on average per element. Finally, I want to talk about the difference between PTC and Peltier. They're two totally different things, but people sometimes get them confused. The Peltier chips are for making these like DIY refrigerated coolers. That's a five quart Coleman cooler with one mounted. It's just two heat sinks, two fans, and a Peltier chip in between. And then you sink the cold side off and blow that down into the unit. Here's a double unit in a five gallon bucket. Both of these are videos on my channel, by the way, if you want to see how to actually make these but pretty easy. You can also use the Peltier chips to generate electricity. You kind of use them in reverse. You mount them over a heat source. In this case, two 12706 over three T lights and a heat sink. And then the temperature differential from the bottom to the top creates the voltage and the current. And as you can see, it can run some serious stuff. That's a three volt light, by the way, and a three volt fan. I ran a light bulb, a light panel, the fan, and this radio. So pretty cool. A lot of things you can run with it and super easy to do. You can of course expand it out like this and do three and three or hook it all in series for that could be six volts. By the way, these are just oil burners burning things like olive oil and vegetable oil.